Hello everybody, welcome to the video on making an online Pokemon game in Game Maker. So it's been about, if we look here, six years since I posted anything about this series. And a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, really want to see me finish this series. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, after six years, obviously I've lost all the code, so we will be remaking this in Game Maker. Originally, I did this in JavaScript, uh, not the greatest thing in the world. If you want to do things in the browser, probably use RPG Maker XP, I believe. That's good for web design or for web games. Um, you could probably do it in Game Maker too, actually. I haven't really tested out Game Maker's whole HTML aspect side of things, but I'm sure it would work too. Uh, I did a poll as well. Um, a whole two people responded. Uh, so we are going with Game Maker um, instead of Java. I decided to be the tiebreaker because Game Maker, even though it costs money, we don't have to redesign the entire uh, renderer. We don't have to redesign the entire ECS system. Uh, we just have to deal with Game Maker, which is pretty easy. And it's my main language. It's the language I know best. Um, so it should be fairly straightforward. And... Yeah, so if we come into the project now, we unfortunately cannot jump straight into it. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have our server and our client on one project. Normally in the past, what I would do is I would have two Game Maker projects running, and I would have the server and the client separate, two different projects. I would just tab back and forth to make modifications. That worked. However, I find that to be a little too messy for me these days, so I'm going to be doing this all in one single project that will work just fine. It's still gonna be one centralized server instead of a, like, the client won't be able to connect or create their own server. It's gonna be one server where all clients connect. We're just gonna be doing it on one project. It's gonna make it easier for you guys. It's gonna make it easier for me. Um, I've never actually done this before, but it shouldn't be too difficult um, to get around. But the first hurdle we need to figure out is the fact that if you press play in Game Maker, uh, you can only one, run one project at a time. You can't run multiple instances of the same game. Uh, it'll tell you to stop the current version. Uh, so we need to fix this with something called A-B testing, um, which Game Maker, honestly, it might have something for this. I have no idea. I don't know much of the new systems in Game Maker. Um, I'm not fully up to date with everything. So it's entirely possible that you can do this very easily. However, what I'm going to be doing which is optional for you guys, is using this program. And this program only works with Windows. So if you have Mac or anything, I don't know what to tell you. Figure something else out, I guess. Um, it's not too difficult to figure out. It's just takes a little bit of effort, but it is possible, obviously. So what you can do is you're going to go into this uh, repository in GitHub. I will link it in the description. And you're going to click code and download zip. I already have it downloaded, um, not here though. Uh, here I have it downloaded. Um, you're gonna right click it and extract all to extract the data. Um, and I know it's a little small, hard to see right now on your screen, um, but just bear with me. Uh, it'll open, you click it, and you'll find abtesting.exe. And basically you're just gonna run that. And uh, Windows protect your PC. I'm going to click view more and run anyway. Um, I do trust this. If you don't trust this, then you can run something else. Um, and now this, again, might be difficult to see. And I can probably make this a little easier to see if I do this. Um, hopefully that makes it easier to read what's going on. But here we have simply, we have to provide three things. The fourth thing is optional. Uh, we need the runner link. This is the link to Game Maker's runner. Uh, we need the temp link, which is where Game Maker stores all of its temporary files, and then the name of the project. Um, and we'll only need to provide this once, and it should save automatically. So let's figure out how we can get those links. So for the runner link, this is usually located um, with your downloads folder, wherever you download Game Maker. So for me, that's the C drive. You go into program data, and this might be a hidden file, so you'll just have to go to view uh, somewhere, show hidden files somewhere. But yeah, you have to show your hidden files, go to program data, 
look for Game Maker Studio 2, go to Cache, Runtimes, and click the version of Game Maker you're doing. For me, it's 2024. Um, I just recently updated it after two years of not updating it, so it's that one. Go to Windows uh, X64, and here you'll see a file called runner.exe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire path. So I'm going to click up here and copy Control C. I'm going to come into the runner link and paste it in. And then I need to add in a slash and then runner.exe. And this does need to be capitalized, I believe. All right. So for the temporary link now, for here, we can come up here and we can do percent app data percent. And this will take you to your roaming file, but we don't want roaming. We want local. Um, and if you've done anything with Minecraft, usually, I know a lot of people know how to get here. So you go to app data, so go back a directory, go into local, and then again find Game Maker Studio 2. It's using alphabetical order, so Game Maker Studio 2. And you'll have this GMS2 temporary file. So you're going to click here, and then you should see um, some files and some folders. Uh, you may have no folders here on the bottom, or you may have a whole bunch more. These are basically files that get created every time you run a Game Maker uh, instance. So if I were to press play on this right now, and then I come back, uh, it actually created a new folder for that instance of the game. Um, so I'm going to close this, and I'm going to copy up here and just copy this directory. I don't need to add anything to the end, I just need just that. And for the project name, you're going to name it whatever you called your project. So it'll be the same name as like kind of this first part of the folder. So for me, it's online Pokemon. It's one word, capital O, capital P. So online Pokemon. And then you're going to press execute. And when you do this, it should run a version of your game. And you can run this as many times as you want. And that works just fine. And if I were to close this now, I should be able to reopen it. Um, if I go back to it, go back to the folder, run A-B testing again, it'll open up and it'll still have the same values in it. So I don't have to worry about leaving it open. In fact, what I like to do is I like to take this and um, I can probably make this bigger again. I like to take this executable, you can just drag it down to the very bottom here to your taskbar and now it'll stay down here as a link. So you can click that and it'll open up automatically and I can press execute and it'll always run. So it doesn't run always the current version. So what it does is it'll run the last ran version on Game Maker. So if I were to save this, just save it on Game Maker, nothing happens. It'll run the old version. But if I press play, like up here, press F5 or press the play button, it'll update and it will actually do that. It'll actually run the new version. So let's test this out. I am going to create a new object. So right click here, create object, or what I like to do is press Alt O. Now I'll create an object. And we'll just call this object test. I'm gonna try and get in the habit of doing um, O test, like this name convention. I used to do OBJ underscore but I really don't like that anymore so I'm gonna do O test uh, we'll do a create event I guess and um, actually we'll go to the draw event so I will do draw draw and I'm going to iteratively go through this and draw out all the arguments inside of game maker so if I were to do a for loop um, for var i equals zero, i is less than, and I wonder if this is big enough for you guys. I can never tell. So for var I equals zero, um, we need to get the count of the parameter. So parameter count, and then semicolon i plus plus. Whoops. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw text, and we'll get parameter string. And this needs to be i plus 1 because for some reason parameter string starts at 1, I believe. 
Um, and we need to do an X and Y position. So the X will just do 25, and the Y will do at 25 times I plus 25. Uh, th none of this really matters. Don't worry about this too much. You don't have to follow along with this. Um, this is just to show you that it works. So if I were to run this right now, um, you'll see nothing. Probably because the hope. Oh, two reasons actually. One, I don't know if the uh, draw set. I don't know if the color is set to white. So we'll do that. Draw set color C white. And second, we actually need to add the object to the room for it to do anything. So there we go. Now if I run this, uh, you'll see ooh, it is small. Um, you'll see the arguments that are provided within the application itself. Dash game is an argument, and then the location of the win file, the temporary file, is also provided. So if I were to come back into this A-B testing program and I run this now, execute, it'll run the current version, the one I just did with the game and the arguments displayed. What I can also do here is in arguments, I can actually provide more arguments. So I'm going to do dash client. So that's going to be an argument I'm going to provide. The name of this doesn't matter. Um, this is just one I'm going to provide myself. So I just decided to call it client. You could call it whatever you want. So if I do that and I execute it, it'll say dash client. And if I run it in GameMaker itself, it will not say dash client, which means it's going to be a server. So that is how I'm going to be dealing with that whole server client situation. So let me try this then. I'm gonna create a new room. So right click create room or alt R and we'll call this the server room. And in the room itself, we'll call this the client room so right click how do i rename again uh, f2 client room so we're going to start off in the client room um and then we have the server room so in here in the create event uh, i will essentially copy everything in here um so this for loop i'm going to copy and paste it so we're iterating through all of the parameters um, except we can't draw them anymore so we need to look for the parameter that says dash client so if we get one that says dash client then we need to do something so let's get the parameter first so var param equals parameter parameter string i plus one and here I will say if param equals dash client as a string and this code you will probably need so might want to follow along with this um, up here I will do var is client equals false and down here I will say is client equals true so what we're doing is we are iterating through all the parameters if we find a parameter called dash client we'll set is client to true and we'll say if not is client we can do something else we can do something else um, so if it's not the client we'll just say room go to server room and in the server room I can come into here and I'll just change the background uh, well actually I'll change the background of the client so I'm gonna go to the client go to the background here and we'll change the color down here to something a little lighter um, sure why not we'll do green and now if I were to run the project just in game maker you'll see a black screen because we did not find anything that was a client argument so this is going to be our server and now if I come back to AP testing and I execute this uh, well nothing happened that's great um, Makes me wonder what is going on here. Um, another crazy thing is that we aren't drawing anything. So that might be an issue. Um, probably because we're in the server room, actually. Um, that would make sense. So let's do this instead. Um, draw. We won't go to the server room. 
and we'll just run this now and see what happens. Because now we're in the client room, which is green. It should display all of my arguments. Um, if I come here and I press execute here, we should be seeing dash client. Um, it's possible there's a space being included. So I will have to see, does GameMaker provide a string trim? It does, oh, that's lovely. And that should just remove the white space. So if I do this and I add it back in room, go to server room. And I run this now. So it goes to the server room there. But hopefully if I run this on AB testing, no, it doesn't work. So I have to figure out why that is, but I will figure that out for next time. Right now we are running out of time. Um, so next time I will just quickly fix this bug. That'll be the first thing I do. Maybe this is gonna be homework for you guys. Maybe you guys already know what stupid thing I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that'll be the first thing we fix next time. And then we will be setting up the server and client itself. This is just for a test anyway. This isn't really kind of the final code of how it's gonna look. So I just wanted to do a test though. Though we should, it should just be some string manipulations to figure out, you know what? Maybe if I spelled client correctly, that would, that would definitely cause the issue. So yeah, let's, let's run this now. Cause I have a feeling that was it. Um, so yeah, so I run the server and now I go to AB testing and I press execute here. Okay, there we go. Now, anytime we execute it from the AB testing program, it'll run as a client. But if we run it through GameMaker, it'll run as a server. Okay, guys, I am just a little, a little out of it right now, apparently. Um, so never mind. I guess we won't be fixing that first thing next video. Um, we'll be fixing it right now. I'm just not the smartest. But yeah, so next time we will be setting up a server client connection. Um, I'm also going to be getting rid of all of these folders because I don't like these folders. Um, I like to organize things a little differently, so we'll be doing that. Yeah, so we'll just have a group here called server and a group called client. Um, and yeah, I will be looking to see if this is big enough too. I might need to make this font bigger um, so you guys can see better. It's pretty easy to fix. So yeah, uh, anyway. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later.